move on to next speaker. And Bong Gyeong Koo and Dr. Bong Gyeong Koo, and he did also undergraduate in at Postec and PhD at Postec as well. And he he did his postdoctor study, Hubert Institute in Netherlands. And currently he is a group leader in IMBA, I don't know what that stands for, and in Austria. Dr. Ku, are you ready? Me well. All right, please start your presentation. Okay. Yeah, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how a oncogene can remodel the uh, stem cell niche in order to affect uh, wild type stem cells nearby the uh, oncogene expressing mutant cells. Uh, but at the same time, I think you can also regard my presentation as a uh, kind of um, some examples uh, for advanced genetics, such as mosaic analysis tools and short conditional introns. So this work has been led by two brilliant scientists, uh, Ming Yu Yang, as well as Sam Mu. Um, I didn't bring the photo, but um, Sing Min Han has also helped a lot for the single cell RNA seq part. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, I think uh, in, in Korean uh, biology society, I myself is known as a person uh, working on uh, organoids. Um, and I've been also showing this slide many times to uh, many people. And this slide basically shows uh, why we can uh, utilize intestinal organoids as a model system, even though we have uh, invertebrate models, vertebrate models, as well as uh, cancer cell lines. And the short uh, answer is that uh, this organoid system comes with a uh, uh, very little genetic uh, mutations because they have an intact genome and they work uh, as a, a in vitro system where you can observe in vivo phenotype. It works like a cell line because they grow uh, pretty well in vitro. And you can also treat ligand inhibitors. Uh, they are evolutionarily very close if you work with a mouse organoid, but you can also work with a human organoid, which means that you can perform uh, human experiments uh, in a dish. However, uh, about, uh, I think now already uh, 12, 13 years ago, uh, when I started my work with organoids, uh, there was no uh, means to control the gene expression uh, in the organoid. So how to control gene expression in organoid was a, a main question of myself as a geneticist. And this had uh, led me to publish a bunch of work uh, showing uh, viral gene overexpression and knockdown in the organoid system. And this is about how we can generate uh, bacterial artificial chromosome transgenic organoid, although this one was uh, published in PLOS one, but it was the foundation uh, of my next publication, which came out in Cell Stem Cell in 2013, uh, which is about uh, CRISPR gene correction in organoid. Uh, the reason is that from this plus one uh, work, uh, we got to know how we can transpect organoids uh, using various uh, chemical uh, liposomes. And later, uh, we also worked on uh, developing uh, protocols in uh, electroporation of organoids. This was actually done by uh, Toshiro Sato. And using that, uh, my lab has also uh, introduced piggyback system for uh, controlled gene expression in organoid as well as conditional knock-on in organoid in 2017. And nowadays, uh, you can also see some publications out there, uh, which is about CRISPR-Cas screening in organoid. So uh, what I can tell you now is that uh, thanks to all these uh, technological advancements, we can now work with organoid as if we are working with uh, uh, iPS cells or uh, other cancer cells. However, uh, since I was initially trained as a mouse geneticist, uh, I was thinking that you know, the more I work for organoid, uh, the less my loved system, which is mouse, is uh, less uh, attractive. And, and because of that, um, about <clears throat> five years ago, I, I started thinking about 
uh, some of the limits of mass genetics. And it is actually a very good idea to think about the limitations because by knowing the limitations, you can also try to uh, change, the, uh, change the boundary. So there are three uh, thoughts that I had at the time. The first one is about uh, the disease modeling in human. Uh, when we model, for example, cancer in the mouse, we knock out a uh, tumor suppressor in the entire body or in an entire tissue. Whereas in a human, um, cancer uh, is a clonal disease because it actually starts from a single cell. And we also know that aging is a very stochastic event that not all cells are aging together. They are actually uh, aging with a differential speed, I think. And due to that, to model these kind of things in, in mouse, uh, to recapitulate the human disease, uh, we have to have a mosaic genetics tool. And secondly, uh, this is a very painful uh, statement that mice are not humans, uh, which means that no matter what we do with mice, uh, we may not be able to understand human entirely because the two species are basically different. And this is the reason why we are so much interested in working with human pluripotent stem cells and organoids. Uh, however, uh, since we cannot work with the human itself, uh, we are currently thinking a lot about using a primate model, primate model system. So basically a non-human primate system such as monkeys and marmosets. But in that systems, uh, genetics is not really easy. So uh, I was actually thinking that uh, we should develop the genetics, genetic tools even further so that uh, we can also apply those to uh, different uh, model systems. And lastly, uh, I don't have an answer for this point, uh, but this is also a very prevailed uh, assumption that people often think that removing the cause is always a cure, but it is not. Uh, and this is actually very sad to see that uh, a lot of big farmers are focusing on uh, disease cause uh, in order to cure the disease. But imagine that you already have dementia and has lost your urines, then you basically has uh, no other ways except you get the urinal transplantation. Because even if you remove the cause, the lost urines will not come back. And to know this reversibility in biology, we also need to think about how we can perform reversible genetics. Uh, but this is a question that I'm still uh, trying to address. So today I'm going to show you uh, two answers of mine. Uh, first one is about mosaic genetics tool, and the other one is short conditional intronic method. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so before I get into the mosaic system, I'd like to highlight uh, what is the current focus of cancer biology and what we are missing at the moment. So as you see from this uh, <clears throat> cartoon, uh, the current focus of cancer biology is after we have a cancer mice. And we, we are interested in how they grow, how they become invasive, and how they make metastasis. And I think we must have spent more than 30 years to study this part. But we also know at the same time that although there are uh, undeniably great uh, achievements of human being uh, in, in preventing cancer spread, but we also know that it is not enough. Whereas um, everybody is saying about, talking about the importance of cancer prevention as early as possible. Uh, so I started focusing on this precancerous transformation that is starting from a single cell to, to have, a, have a mass. And actually, this is a, a precancerous transformation since uh, in this stage, uh, these mutant cells are not actually called as a cancer. Uh, they are not even called as a tumor. These are just the mutant cells uh, sporadically present in a body. Uh, but the problem is uh, we do not have... Uh, uh, clear means to detect them. They are histologically really similar. And in the mouse genetics, uh, we didn't really use this part because we were doing genetic modification uh, in most cases in the entire body or in the entire tissue. And to overcome this, I thought that we have to develop a method uh, with which we can make a fluorescence labeling of the mutant clone. And this method should be precise uh, for making genetic modification at the single cell level. 
And thanks to the single cell RNA sequencing technology, uh, if we have a very small region, we can isolate the, uh, the part. And after a simple dissociation, uh, we will be able to detect mutant cells, uh, the wild type cells around, and also the immune cells and methanchema cells to know how they interact uh, by looking at the transcriptome of individual cells. So to make everything possible at the same time, uh, I was thinking about uh, utilizing a previously existing model, which is a Rosa 26 confetti mouse. So this is the mouse uh, which has been used for lineage tracing mostly. It has this uh, stopper. And after that, uh, we have a uh, green, yellow, red, and uh, cyan fluorescence protein cDNAs. And they are uh, arranged with a, a LOSP site in this way. Um, and by using this, uh, people were able to uh, perform lineage tracing, uh, as you see uh, from this picture. Uh, this is a lineage tracing uh, done by confetti mouse in the uh, mouse small intestine. Uh, what we have done in the lab is that we uh, utilize CRISPR technology in order to uh, modify this RP uh, to accommodate another cDNA in the downstream of RP. And by this simple modification, uh, we can achieve, again, uh, color labeling with the four different fluorescence proteins. And at the same time, only the red fluorescence protein expressing cells uh, will be expressing the additional cDNA together. And by doing so, we can perform fluorescence labeling. Red clone is always with oncogene, not with the other clones. And they are very compatible with the single cell RNA seq analysis. So uh, initially, uh, we made uh, three oncogenic uh, mouse. So the first one uh, contains NOT1 ICD, second one uh, has an uh, active form of KRAS, and the last one has active form of PS3 kinase. So here I show you uh, one example from KRAS. Uh, you can see this very nice uh, salt and pepper pattern of uh, yellow, red, and cyan. And initially, uh, the labeling pattern is very similar among these colors. But if you wait just about two weeks, you see that the uh, red clones becomes a uh, very uh, dominating. And the reason is that uh, the red clone is expressing oncogenic KRAS. So initially, the labeling efficiency is similar, but they have a growth advantage so that within two weeks of time, the entire tissue is changing into uh, KRAS expressing uh, tissue. Uh, so this was actually uh, previously known that uh, even if you activate KRAS in a, a fraction of cells in the tissue, uh, they will become dominant. Um, so before I get into the, uh, the study, we checked how the mouse is working uh, by looking at the downstream activation in a red clone specific manner. And another nice thing is that this yellow, red, and cyan uh, <clears throat> recombination rate is very similar to each other, meaning that uh, we can also uh, make a cross comparison uh, between among these lines. So the first thing we were looking at was uh, stem cell dynamics uh, in the uh, crypt of the mouse small intestine. So if we look at the crypt part, uh, in the base part, we have a stem cell zone. And within this stem cell zone, we can observe uh, stem cells competing each other. So basically, if you label one stem cell, uh, either they lose the color by kicked out from the stem cell zone, or they proliferate and generate uh, progenies of them uh, more and more so that they, uh, they can eventually uh, concur the rest with its own progeny. So if you look at uh, the pattern uh, of, over the course of the time, then you see the clonal size grows from a fraction to a quarter to one third and half and so on uh, in about three weeks of time. And this uh, clone of uh, growth pattern is kept very nicely in the wild type cells of all these mutants. So meaning that the wild type cells in these mutants are there, they all behave in a similar manner. Whereas all the mutant cells that are expressing notch, keras, and PI3 kinase active forms, they show uh, rapid uh, monoclonalization, uh, uh, meaning that these clones are more aggressive compared to the uh, yellow um, <clears throat> white type cells. 
However, up to this point, uh, everything was known before, so there was no uh, novel point to study. Uh, however, uh, Mingyu Yang uh, has found something really interesting uh, about two years ago. So what he has found was that uh, if we look at yellow clones that are far away from the red, then they behave exactly like uh, normal clones. However, the yellow clones that are sitting next to the red, uh, they show a little bit faster uh, <clears throat> monoclonality uh, within three weeks of time. This actually means that this yellow clone is affected by the red, uh, and this must be a soluble factor. So now we can imagine that once we have a red clone expressing Keras and PS3 kinase oncogene, then they will secrete something uh, to affect the stem cell activity of the nearby uh, crypt. Um, so we, we look at the, um, some of uh, the mathematical model of our theory and checked out the reason of uh, faster colonization. Uh, we came with an idea that uh, they are basically losing uh, the stem cell number in the wild type because of the influence from the red. So um, yeah, I'm now cutting down the long story short, uh, but nevertheless, uh, to know the, um, <clears throat> the crosstalk between the red and yellow, uh, we basically try to profile the red and yellow and the uh, uh, surrounding immune and mesenchymal cells uh, with the single cell RNA sequencing. And to compare, to, to know what's going on, uh, we had to have a control. So we also used confetti mouse uh, to profile the same cell types at the same time. Um, and the single cell RNA seq analysis was really tough. So uh, I cannot really explain everything that we've done. It took us probably more than six months to understand what's, what's going on. Uh, what we have found is that from this uh, cell types, uh, we isolated uh, eight different epithelia and seven uh, different mesenchymal and immune cells respectively. And what we found were mainly two things. The first one is that uh, this PMP ligands are highly expressed in the epithelial cell types of, uh, excuse me. Yeah, epithelial cell types uh, of uh, KRAS and PIC kinase mouse. So you see the uh, more evident dots here and there. And whereas uh, in one of the mesenchymal cells uh, called stromal cell type two, uh, they have a high level of soluble FRP and uh, lower level of r uh, in the uh, PIS3 kinase model specific manner. So, uh, and these are the uh, components that are alterating the wind signaling environment in the mesenchymal tissue. Uh, so, um, as a conclusion, uh, we can say that in Keras model, we have a uh, uh, oncogenic cells that are secreting DMP uh, to affect the differentiation of the yellow cells. And by promoting the differentiation, uh, the yellow cells are losing the stem cell number uh, more rapidly. Uh, in case of PIS3 kinase, uh, they have a similar uh, mode with BMP, but they at the same time alter the gene expression of stromal cell type to have a, a lowered wind activity by changing the level of arspondin and soluble FRPs. And to model this using organoid, uh, we were taking out uh, login and arspondin. So login is actually uh, used to block the BMP pathway signal and arspo is for uh, wind signaling augmentation. So when we take out login and login and arspo together, as you see that uh, stem cell activity is heavily compromised. Uh, whereas when we isolate these mesenchymal cells from wild type, uh, we were able to rescue the phenotype quite a bit. However, interestingly, when we isolate the same mesenchymal cells from PI3 kinase model, uh, we could not rescue the phenotype, uh, showing that this uh, fiber bust in PI3 kinase model is indeed compromised. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, validation experiments, but I'm going to show you. Uh, another very important uh, in vivo experiment that prove, has proven that BMP is indeed a ligand that uh, mediates the communication between red and yellow. 
So in both KRAS and PS break kinase cases, uh, we suppose that BMP is the ligand that is secreted by red to affect the yellow stem cell differentiation. And to block this, we were using this LDN chemical inhibitor. So basically, uh, we did the same linear stressing experiment and treated LDN in one control. And as you see here, uh, compared to the confetti control, uh, when the Keras and PS3 kinase is activated, uh, the, the neighboring yellow cells undergo faster clonal drift, whereas the LDN treated uh, doesn't show as such. And this was kept uh, true, uh, was also turned out to be true in the PS3 kinase case. Uh, even if we were doing the statistics, statistics in a different way, the pattern was the same. So it was an elevation, but it was inhibited by uh, LDN treatment. So that uh, has proven that the BMP signal is basically the one uh, mediating the cost. So uh, the main message of this work is that when we have an oncogene expression in the red clone, so basically in a human body, it's going to be non-colored clone, but with the KRAS or PIC kinase activation, uh, they will then secrete BMP, and it will then harm the stem cell activity of the wild type so that the red clone is not only growing faster, but they are also uh, uh, territorizing faster by, by, uh, by making the stem cells, the wild type stem cells being lost from the tissue. So I'm gonna uh, change my gears to the short conditional intronic system. Um, so this slide basically shows that in 2013, uh, Rudolf, Rudolf Janisch in Harvard uh, published this work by saying that with the CRISPR, uh, using two gRNA and two single-strand ODN, we can nicely generate a conditional knockout very easy. Uh, but in 2019, uh, Gru and his friends, uh, so basically like uh, more than 10 labs in the world, uh, confirmed that this is working but only with a less than 1% of efficiency. And they are proposing to work with a, a long, longer template uh, in order to make a conditional knockout. So this means that conditional knockout in mouse, even after the CRISPR revolution, uh, is still not easy. So we started thinking about <clears throat> uh, changing this um, situation. Uh, so we developed a short, sorry, I really want to go back. Yeah, uh, short conditional intron method. So this short conditional intron functions as an intron. So if you put them uh, in the middle of EGP cDNA, uh, when this is transcribed as an mRNA, this intron will be gone because they are intron, and then you can get uh, protein expression. Whereas uh, the intron contains these two locks besides. So after the grid recombination, the intronic function will be gone. And from here, uh, the mRNA will still have the uh, small pieces of uh, recombined intron, which will lead to uh, protein truncation. So we check whether this is the case or not um, uh, in this uh, transfection uh, experiment. And as you see that the, the green signal is now lost after pre-activation. So, we, we basically made a, a zygote injection to have this homozygote mouse of uh, beta catenin which is a lethal gene. So having a homozygote means that we get a pretty nice uh, conditional allele. Uh, this is the phenotype um, analysis. So homozygote has a pretty good beta catenin expression and only after pre yeah, you can lose it. And you sure? Double check. I'll tell you that we have now made a seven Mask different conditional allele uh, just within this year by performing this simple uh, zygotic injection. Although the insertion uh, efficiency uh, varies a lot depending on the gene, uh, but I can tell you that it is very easy method that everybody can think about to use. And another excitement is that the same short conditional system uh, has been tested now in rats, uh, two different species of monkey, and Susu is a wild pig, and they all behave 
uh, as if they were in uh, mouse cells. And we also showed that the short condition intron works in xenophus and zebrafish. So probably, if you are lucky, uh, this method uh, might be able to, might be used uh, for generating conditional knockouts, uh, not only in the uh, mammalian systems, uh, but also in other uh, species in the vertebrate system. So I hope that this uh, can actually help uh, to uh, make a, a hu human, uh, non-human primate models, uh, conditional knockouts in the near future. So today I showed you uh, two different uh, projects. One is mosaic uh, oncogene activation. And we are also working on a mosaic knockout uh, system, uh, which I didn't have a time to present today, uh, but this one is also working in the lab. And uh, the school system was just shown. And I can tell you that by changing the uh, modules in SCON, we can also think about generating different artificial introns, uh, which is activatable or even reversible. So we are currently working on this to uh, generate uh, interesting uh, modification of artificial introns uh, that can be used for various uh, demands of uh, conditional knockout and gene, uh, gene activation. Okay, uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank my team, especially uh, Sungmin and Mingyu and Sam uh, for their work that I presented today. And also uh, my collaborators, uh, Jung Gyeong Kim, uh, Ben Simons and Daniel Shitanga. Uh, this work has been supported by uh, European Research Council grant, Welcome Trust, uh, Human Frontiers, Cancer Research UK, and also from the internal budget for MIMBA. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thanks a lot for the great talk. And any questions from the audience? Uh, very simple question. Why did this uh, uh, short conditional intro is more uh, efficient, show more efficiency, higher efficiency than the, the conventional conditional lockout? So just it's a very short distance is important? Uh, yeah, so uh, basically, uh, in, if we want to make a conditional uh, knockout uh, using the Rudy Yenishis method, we have to cut two sides. And it has to, have a, has to happen in the same chromosome, uh, which is not so easy, I think. And that is why the efficiency is below 1%. Whereas uh, our method uh, utilize the short conditional intro, which is less than 200 base pair. So this is now uh, even smaller than the GP. And as you know, GP tagging is uh, uh, very uh, comparably very easy nowadays with the CRISPR. Uh, so that's why we think that uh, introducing this 200 base pair into an exon is as easy as uh, GP tagging using CRISPR in the mouse. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Uh, thank you for interesting talk. And I'm Ji Wano from uh, Kyungbu National University. So about the like oncogene driven model of yours, and then I found that uh, those kind of like a clone which have the oncogene can promote the other cellular population, especially like a clone and crypt what you've shown. And have you ever like uh, checked any other cellular population around that like area except the clone or crypt? And that's uh, my first question. And the second question is more fundamental and philosophical question. Why do like oncogene driven population have the promotion of other like population? Is that to survive those like uh, self motivation things or any other reason, for example, like to exhaust another like uh, area or niche? So the cancer can like can be promoted by themselves and then it, is there any kind of like a philosophical answer of you that's what I want to know thank you uh, yeah so for the first question uh, we actually did uh, a lot of um, analysis on various cell types so we basically you know had a uh, in total um, I think like 24 different cell types uh, in the single cell RNA seq and we made a you know a differentially expressed gene list of each to know uh, which are mainly changed and so on. Um, so 
so there were really a huge bunch of work that we did uh, but con the conclusion was uh, very simple that uh, we have a uh, big changes in epithelia uh, because of the oncogene expression and we also saw some changes in the neighbor neighboring epithelia as well as the um, one uh, fibroblast type um, among immune cells the changes were very uh, sparse uh, it was not really significant but the only one that we saw some uh, showing some changes were uh, monocytes so i think it is also interesting uh, to look at them more carefully because we were basically looking at a short-term event uh, so if we give them longer time like uh, three months or six months we might be able to see uh, further changes in the leash environment um, for the second question uh, my answer is I don't know why uh, this oncogene does this. Uh, I only know that uh, as a consequence, the oncogenic uh, clones, especially when they express Keras and PSD kinase, uh, we cannot uh, generalize this entirely because, uh, for example, uh, the notch activated clones, they didn't show any niche remodeling. So that was a very epithelial specific. Uh, only the Keras and PSD kinase showed the uh, this remodeling effect. And because of that, uh, the red clones with the Keras and PS3 kinase activation uh, can propagate uh, much easily uh, in the tissue. Uh, and similar uh, observation has been now made with the APC mutation in the gut. So in case of APC, uh, once they are lost, the tumor start expressing uh, wind antagonist and this again affects the uh, surrounding wild type cells. So when our work uh, was published in Nature, uh, two different labs also published their work about APC. So I think at least for these three uh, uh, cancer-related genes, we might be able to uh, generalize this phenomenon. Okay, finally, one question online actually. So talk Dr. Park, Juyang Park, and question, can you see the question in the chatting panel, chatting window? Dr. Ko? Uh, no, I, I'll, no. Okay, I'll read the question then. Okay, you expressed only one oncogene to mimic the initial cancer development, and the question is, modulating only one question, was, it, was that enough to generate cancer in your model? Uh, of, of course not. Uh, we are interested in the behavior of the first uh, mutant with a one oncogene uh, activation. So they are not cancer. They are not tumor cells. They are simply a mutant uh, which may happen in, in our body. And we all know that these are the seeding cells, seed cells. Uh, they may disappear or they may survive to form a tumor after six months or one year. But the problem is, during this time, uh, we didn't have any idea what's going on. And only with this method, we can now uh, detect how they behave uh, in comparison to the wild type. So I myself uh, is, uh, is not interested in combining oncogenes and tumor suppressor to make a cancer straight on. I'm interested in this very mild, uh, simple mutant cells, uh, how they behave, and how we can prevent their spread uh, in vivo, because then uh, we can move our current uh, therapeutic regimes from uh, after the you know, cancer genesis to the prevention scheme, so that people may not be able to get cancer by simply suppressing it. Okay, thanks for your participation, Dr. Koo.